Good morning. Uh, today we are in Guwahati and we have a very special guest, Ms. Uh, Belinda Wrights, who is a wildlife conservationist and who is renowned in the Tibetan world, uh, particularly for her photos, which she submitted to His Holiness the Dalai Lama in 2006. After that, His Holiness the Dalai Lama has made a historic announcement during the Amravati Kala Chakra in 2006, uh, which led to an immense outpouring of emotions from the Tibetan people inside Tibet and uh, burning of Tibetan, uh, burning of furs, animal furs and skins inside Tibet. So, <clears throat> first of all, uh, Ms. Belinda, good morning. I would like you to give us a brief introduction about yourself and how you came into this wildlife conservation activism. Okay. So, uh, my name is Belinda Wright and I've spent all my life in India and all my life working on wildlife issues. And um, my particular uh, sort of focus for the past 24 years has been on wildlife crime. So that's um, assisting the authorities to try and curb poaching and the illegal wildlife trade. And of course, most roads leave in one, lead in one direction. So, um, you know, much, much of my time has been um, looking at the connection um, of, of the illegal wildlife trade of, of big cats in particular um, and, and rhino horn and, and pangolin and a number of other species between India and it being smuggled into China, often through Nepal. In 2006, you have submitted some very interesting photos of Tibetans wearing animal furs to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. After that, His Holiness the Dalai Lama made an announcement uh, urging all Tibetans inside Tibet to give up wearing animal skins. Would you like to tell us something about that? So, in, in the early part of 2005, um, I heard rumours and I also saw one, one or two photographs on, on the internet about skins being used in horse festivals in Tibet. And um, I talked talk to a, a friend of mine in, in um, EIA, another, another NGO, and I said, you know, I really need to go to Tibet um, to find out if this is true and, and so on. So four of us went, as, as, uh, went to, to, to Tibet, and we went to Lhasa, then we went to Litang and so on. And we went, um, uh, you know, we were, we were tourists, and we went to these horse festivals. And to my um, great, great distress, we found all these um, fresh tiger skins. And not just one or two, many, many. I think it was a, something like 80 or so fresh tiger skins that people were wearing, and they were selling them on the streets of, of Litang. Um, and so on. And we talked to many of the Tibetan people and they, they really didn't kind of, didn't, didn't put two and two together. The fact that these were animals killed uh, illegally in India and, and it, was, it was the same as if somebody was wearing a Rolex watch or something. It, it had become a, a, a status symbol. And there, there are historical connections to this, but they're minimal compared to what I'm um, describing. They were mainly for um, if, a, if a, um, a Tibetan general, I'm talking in ancient times, if he won a great battle or something, he would be given a small piece of, of tiger skin, apparently, and then that would be sewn onto his jacket. And some princesses and things would uh, step off a pony onto a, a tiger skin, but it was minimal. And here, here, you know, in, in this is 2005. Um, we're talking about hundreds of skins, parades of them. So um, I took a lot of photographs, obviously, and um, including skins being sold on the streets of Litang and and so on, and in Lhasa. Um, what's that market called? Barkor Market. Um, and came back and, and put it in a report. And the report was given to the Chinese authorities and the Indian authorities. And they just said, no, 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 you know, this is, it, it, I mean, it was very shocking. 
and no action was taken. So we got the, the uh, selection of photographs to His Holiness. And um, there was one photograph in particular which shocked him so deeply, which was tiger skins, leopard skins, jewelry and stuff. And, um, and then to my amazement, um, in January uh, 2006, when the, the great Kala Chakra took place, he talked about it. And he said, you know, this is, this is not right for our people. You can find out, I've got the transcript um, anyway. But this is, this, is, this is not what we do. Um, this is not our culture to wear skins and so much jewelry and gold and stuff. And so then people asked him in, it, in this huge um, sort of arena of people. Many people had come from Tibet, as they do for color chakras. And he said, burn them. That's, you know, this is, this is you're wearing a dead animal. You know, this is not right. Just, just burn it. Get it out of your system, sort of thing. So, um, so that was in January, and then the, the burnings, the fires, which was very, very widespread, happened in, in February. So it's virtually in, in ground to a halt now in Tibet, this trade. But um, the Chinese authorities were quite upset by this reaction um, to, to what His Holiness had said in, in the Kala Chakra in India. So they, um, and this is very well documented, kind of ordered people, you know, say, you have to wear your skins. And they said, but we don't have any. And then they were, particularly there were TV anchor people um, said, you have to wear skins. So that's kind of all history now. But, you know, there are two tragedies at, at the end of all this. One is that I thought that um, an exposure like this um, would would be a very positive. Um, there would be a very positive result for for um, poaching of tigers and trading in in their tiger in their parts, and not just tigers, other big cats yes, and, and so on. And there was a big meeting of the convention, the CITES convention, um, which is the largest sort of conservation convention in the world, and. All the countries got together and said, we must totally ban all trade in skins and bones of, of tigers. We, they, they were talking about tigers in this meeting. And uh, China said no. They've already banned the, the tiger bone trade, but it's, it goes on. And they said the skin trade is our internal business, not yours. So again, it's come up in, in CITES, and there's another meeting in, in um, 2019. So that's, anyway, that's one tragedy. And the second tragedy is that the trade is still continuing. So tiger skins are still being smuggled through Nepal into China. It's been almost a decade since his Holiness made that uh, historic announcement in 2006. So I just want to ask you, what has really changed on the ground inside Tibet and what can be done to change, completely eradicate this animal trade inside Tibet? Well, China is capable of eradicating, of course, this trade if it wants to. But unfortunately, tiger bone is still being smuggled into China um, for um, TCM, traditional Chinese medicine. Skins are still being smuggled into China. Um, for uh, home decor use, so as gifts to um, people, you know, businessmen and so on. And it's, the pangolin trade continues. Um, I mean, one remarkable thing that's happened is that they're phasing out the ivory trade. So it's time we phased out the tiger trade as well. Um, it's, you know, India has been very successful um, with its tiger conservation efforts. But without um, the support of, of the illegal consumer country, it's, it'll be very difficult to um, secure a future for the tiger in future. Well, sadly, there still is trade um, 
going through to bed at least. Um, there was just in March this year, March 2017, um, the Lhasa Customs announced that they had done a huge seizure in October 2016. And that included two tiger skins and I think about 24 snow leopard skins and many bones and other parts of, of animal products. So, uh, you, know, it, it, you know, there must have been some Tibetan people also involved in it. So, it, you know, we need to try and um, encourage Tibetan people not to get involved in this. And the world needs to persuade China that this has to stop. Um, you know, the, all trade um, from all sources, whether they're wild, farmed, internal, external, whatever, has to stop. The demand for um, tiger parts, leopard parts, and other endangered wildlife must be put to an end. After the historic announcement by His Holiness the Dalai Lama, there has been <coughs> a huge outpouring of emotions by the Tibetan people inside Tibet. There has been voluntary burning of animal furs, burning of animal shops, uh, animal skin shop, and so many things. Uh, but lately, we have heard that the Chinese government has been forcing Tibetans to wear animal skins during Tibetan festivals and traditional holidays. So, what do you think? Uh, well, can Tibetan you know, who am I to say what another? Uh, community should do, but you know, frankly, th there aren't the skins there anymore. They've burnt them, so uh, any new skins would mean they were fresh skins. So they can just say we don't have skins to do this. I mean, there there are, um, to the best of my knowledge, there are still a few, a handful of Tibetans, many of whom are based in Nepal. Um, less so in India, who, who are still involved in the trade as carriers or whatever. But that'll always happen, and it, it's probably tempting for them. But I think from what I know, and I've been there a number of times, the people have completely rejected it now, the t t Tibetan people, um, after His Holiness, um, you know, after His Holiness brought it up in the Kala Chakra, they don't want to have anything to do with skins anymore. So before we conclude, I just want to ask you if you have any special messages to the Tibetan people inside Tibet uh, regarding animal furs and skin trade. Well, I, th I think that Tibetan culture is one of the greatest cultures on this planet, and I have huge admiration for His Holiness and and his wisdom and his the way he's he's conducted such an amazing life. He's, he represents the heart of, of Tibet and the heart of the Tibetan people. So I think we should follow what he believes and he thinks it's wrong that uh, people should use animal products, should wear them, use them, you know, on their body. And we don't need so much um, finery, jewelry, animal skins, you know, that's not I mean, the Tibetan people are much bigger than that, much greater, much more, um, you know, honorable than that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And it's a pleasure.